Hey, what's up guys? It's Zoe from Low Expectations and today I'm bringing you my Glory of the Shadowlands Hero Guide. I'll be timestamping all the achievements in the description so you can easily find which one you want explained. These achievements need to be completed on Mythic difficulty minimum, but can be done in Keystones too if needs be. You can redo a dungeon if you're saved, you just need someone else's lockout, and you can also complete achievements on different characters to complete the meta achievement. However, you can't swap characters for different parts of the same achievement. We'll be going through achievements dungeon by dungeon. Once you've completed one, do listen to the next before charging onward, because trash may be involved in the following achievement. It's also worth noting you should always track your achievements so you can be sure they're completed before finishing the boss. They'll go from red to white. So, after clearing up some potential confusions, let's grab four friends and get going. We're going to start with Mists of Tyranna Scythe. Make sure before you start you have one member of the Night Fae Covenant. There are three achievements within Mists. We'll go through them in order. The first achievement is fairly easy. Hooked on Hydroponics requires you open the thorny gate before the first boss here and carry a seed through to the boss room and place it near the boss. Only players of the Night Fae Covenant can open the gate, but once the seed is moved they can leave, so if no one has a Night Fae ult, you can ask a friend to pop in and do this for you, then leave. Once you're ready, engage the boss and don't rush. You need to wait till Droman Ufaran has cast Tears of the Forest on the egg multiple times. This should grow the seed till it hatches into an overgrown hydra. Slay this hydra, then kill the boss. The second achievement is easy too. Someone could trip on these requires you find six items within the mist maze. Just kill Mist Caller and run back into the maze. The fog should be gone so you can easily run around and find these toys. This is what the toys look like and here's a map of where you can find them. Pause this video here for ease. The last achievement in Mists is Hunger for Knowledge. You need to keep a mob alive from trash called Spine More Gorger. You can have a DPS taunt it away while you kill the other trash. You can CC it, keep it rooted elsewhere, etc. But once you're at the boss, bring the mob in and wait till it casts consumption on the cocoon of Lacalai in the center. The Gorger should now have the buff Enlightenment. Once it has the buff, kill it off and then finish off the boss. Next we'll look at the achievements in the other side. The first and most difficult achievement requires you pass the buff from Hakar back and forth for the whole entire run. This means doing the entire run with two players stacked up, volleying the debuff back and forth. You can choose whether you want to just do this achievement and then the others later, or be a big blaster and try all the achievements with this one running at the same time. We'll talk about highly communicable first. This is the main difficulty within the dungeon. To do this easily, we should clear all the trash in the dungeon. Yep, clear the whole place out aside the bosses themselves. During the fight with her car, he gives out a debuff called Corrupted Blood, which you need to bounce back and forth during every single boss fight. You obviously can't go back and get it, you need to keep it running throughout. Assign two members of the group just to stand on top of each other at all times till you finish Muzala. It's worth noting that you need to hop through the portals on this fight, so it might be worth assigning it to your tank and healer during this encounter, as they usually go through together. If you're geared enough, you'll be able to push this fight really quickly, which will reduce the likelihood of failing the achievement. For Dila Zyaxa, you can either ignore the detonation entirely, or just stay stacked and heal, or try and place your portals near each other and then time the jumps together and pray. Do not, and I repeat, do not click the teleporter after Zyaxa. To get back to the main room, just be safe and walk. There should be a bit you can climb up. This next achievement you might have already got by accident. Couples therapy requires you hit both bosses with each other's abilities. When fighting Millhouse at the beginning, players targeted with the Echo Finger Laser Extreme, which is marked with arrows, needs to stand either side of the boss, equal distance. This should hit him with the middle part of the Z. Once Maleficent jumps down and Millhouse jumps away, Millhouse will cast Shadow Fury. You need to place this onto Maleficent. This achievement is fairly easy and shouldn't require too much effort, just make sure players hang around melee. The last achievement is Thinking With. This requires you to collect five orbs during the encounter with Dealer Zyaxa. They are in the air above the boss room. Just tactically place your bounce pads and hop up and collect them throughout the fight. Do not rush this fight, but once all five have been collected, kill the boss and proceed to Mazala. 
Next, we're going to Maldraxxus to Theatre of Pain. There's no special requirements here. Everyone should be able to do these achievements with ease. The first achievement, three chose one, is really simple. It needs to be completed on one character, but requires you kill the boss three times, each time killing a different combatant last. You might have this one already just by chance. The next achievement, Fresh Meat, requires us to destroy both chunks of meat in the boss room. To do this, tanks need to keep Gorchop stood next to one of them till he casts Tenderizing Smash. Once he's done this on both of them, you should be free to kill him off. The last achievement is Royal Rumble, which requires you to challenge two of the ghost fighters during the encounter with Mordretha. Make a little macro that says slash tar ghost contender slash challenge, and once you hit 50% the fighters should start to spawn. Once you have both fighters killed, you're free to kill her off. Plaguefall does not have any special requirements either, but requires a bit of coordination. There's an achievement which requires you to have a debuff when each boss dies, but you do not have to keep this debuff rolling throughout the dungeon. Riding with my slimes requires you kill each boss with a debuff active. To get this debuff, you need to stand in the green goo throughout the instance. Standing in it gives you a stacking debuff called Concentrated Plague. Once you get to 10 stacks, it turns into Plague Fallen, which lasts two minutes. If you don't think you'll be killing the boss in two minutes, pick up this buff mid-fight. But with an adequately geared group, it should be fine to get the buff beforehand. This achievement is personal, so every player in the group needs to do this if they want the achievement. If your group is undergeared, you might want to do this achievement separately to the others in Plaguefall. You cannot get each part of this achievement on different occasions or on different characters. We picked up the buff when the boss was low on health, on the first and second boss as there are other achievements to do at the same time. For the last boss there's no slime in the boss room so we had to get the buff beforehand and blast. The achievement for the first boss, Full Gore's Meal, requires you move the boss around the room to slimes in each corner to feed him. The second slime will spawn after you absorb the first and so on. Finger food is in the north to the left of the boss Hearty Haunch is near the entrance, and Dissectable Dessert is near the exit. Drag the boss over the slimes to get him to consume them. Going viral requires you first clear out the boss room of mobs. There are four cauldrons on each of the platforms. On the first platform to your right as you enter the room, there is a potion on the desk next to the cauldron. Once you grab it, you've got 10 seconds to throw it into the cauldron that you're at. Then the next potion spawns. If you've thrown a potion, you have a one minute debuff, so one player can't steamroll it. Another party member has to pick up this potion and run it to the next platform and throw it into that cauldron. Rinse and repeat till all the cauldrons are purple. If you fail doing this, just reset the boss and you'll be able to have another go. During the boss fight, when Dr. Icarus spawns bombs, because of the purple cauldron, he now spawns volatile plague bombs instead. Kill two of these volatile plague bombs and then you're free to kill the boss. Next we'll be going to Revendreth to Halls of Atonement. If you have a DPS that can go healer for one of the bosses and a mage slash shaman slash druid, this will help. The first achievement, picking up the pieces, requires you kill trash leading from Halkius to each of his shards, essentially the whole beginning area. You need to kill all three of his shards like normal, but once engaged in boss combat with Halkius, take him as a group over to each of the areas his shards were. This achievement is fairly buggy, so as long as he's been to each platform, it should be good to kill him. The next achievement, Breaking Bad, can be a bit of a healing check. Having two healers for this achievement, or a really well-geared healer, will be a real advantage. Having a decurse will also come as an advantage here, so druids, mages, shamans. Echelon summons adds called Undying Stone Fiends, which when DPS down turn to stone. These are killed off when he casts Stone Shattering Leap on a player which destroys all mobs turned to stone within the circle. What we need to do here is not kill them off till he summon more than 18 of them. Just before he casts the leap, he casts a curse which slows movement. If you can get a decurse on the player with a circle, he can easily move the circle out of the group until you have enough of them. Each time Echelon summons six of these guys, so we'll need to wait till he's cast at least three times, then throw a leap on them all when they're all petrified and you should be good to kill the boss. 
Nobody put Stenathrius in a corner requires you bait the telekinetic toss into three corners within the boss room. First, mark up three corners you want to bait into. Then get the boss to 40% and stop DPS. Everyone stands on one of the markers so that he throws the statue where you're all standing. He can throw a statue that you've already put into a corner, so be patient and wait until the achievement turns white. After which, kill off Lord Chamberlain and you're done. Sanguine Depths potentially requires you have two tanks or two healers to deal with the first and second achievement as they are really tricky. Residue Evil requires you clear all the trash in the surrounding area around Executor Tarvold and mark up the prison cells. In these prison cells are forlorn captives. What you need to do is kill the ad spawned during the encounter called Fleeting Manifestation when it's at 80% energy or above. This will make it drop a huge floor pool. You need to drop these puddles at the door of the cells so the floor patch reaches the mobs inside and kills them. If the DPS is at max range, they shouldn't take any damage from the adds. Once the captives are all killed by the floor puddles, you can kill the boss. Khaled Shot should be done next and is really tricky. If you want all five players to get the achievement in one go, you need two tanks. This is a personal achievement, so everyone needs to do it if they want to get the achievement. At the start of the gauntlet are anima lanterns. You need to click to get a shadow ball debuff. Once you pick up the debuff and get to Carl, set up a marker exactly like this. You want him to teleport to the opposite side of the room with Gloom Squall. If he goes anywhere else, use the shield and proceed normally till you get the right position. When he's Gloom Squalling at the right place, you stand at green to get pushed back towards the disused anima container. You'll need to click it as you fly. You cannot use anything else to get you to the container. Once you've correctly deposited your anima, you should have the debuff slammed, and once all your party have this debuff, you're free to kill the boss. We took turns to attempt this and actually had to do two runs. You need to re-clear the whole place to have a second go. I Only Have Eyes For You can be done at the very end of the dungeon. You need to pick up two gems and put them into the statue of Duraka the Unbreakable. The first gem can be found behind the statue in the farthest room to the right in Depths of Despair and the second is in the coffin in the last room of the dungeon before General Carl. Duraka is in the room next to the first gem. Once you put them into the statue, he should spawn, just kill him off and voila. Now we're gonna head to Bastion. We're gonna look at Necrotic Weight first. The achievements in here are pretty easy, so you should breeze through these. The first achievement, Bountiful Harvest, involves the second boss, Armath. Once you're at Armath, just click the Grizzly Curio in the corner to summon the Grizzly Colossus. Just before you kill it, pull Armath and make sure Armath is tanked on top of his corpse. When he casts Final Harvest, he should heal to full and gain above Bountiful Harvest, which makes him heal 1% every 4 seconds. You can use a Javelin to kill him off if you struggle with DPS. Surgeon Supplies is the next achievement which involves using the Meat Hook on two barrels around the room. You can mark them up for your team. This should explode the barrels and spawn adds. Once both barrels are down, kill the boss. Ready for raiding 7. You might have already completed. To do this achievement, you just need to do the fight correctly. Don't stand in the comet storm, don't stand in the blizzard, and make sure you're not inside the frozen binds when they're dispelled. Next, we're looking at Spies of Ascension. You might want two healers for Devos' achievement as it's really healing intense. These achievements were pretty difficult too and might take a few attempts. The first achievement, Goliath Offline, begins on the third boss, Ephirion. Make sure that you clear the whole room before you start this achievement. You need to activate these three Goliaths around the room by getting the balls to hit them during Ephirion's recharging phase. Mark up the Goliaths and take the boss to the first one. When the DPS are marked with the arrows, they place their puddles so as the Goliath is between the boss and their orbs. Once he starts recharging, the Goliath should come to life and you'll be able to kill it off. Then move Ephirion to the next sleeping Goliath and rinse and repeat till all three are down. Experiental is the next one and requires you pick up spears dropped by the angels fighting above the boss room during the encounter and throw them into the boss. Once an angel dies, it drops a spear in the air. Some are easy to grab and some are harder. You reach them by falling off the platform in phase two. This boosts you up into the air to reach the spears. 
You can spot them by their blue swirls around them. Once a spear is able to be grabbed, you have two minutes to get it. Demon hunters are good at this because of glide. I would also advise you take two healers if you're not giga geared. Once you've hit the boss with five spears, you are free to kill her off. This achievement is extremely buggy. Sometimes she doesn't register the spear on her counter, but the achievement will still be complete if you're sure you hit her. We killed her off with four spears having registered, but we still got the achievement. The last achievement, I can see my house from here, is done after the dungeon is complete. You need to collect five orbs around the dungeon within 60 seconds of the last one being collected. These orbs are floating above the dungeon, one to the left side, one to the right side, and three center. One is near, one is far, and one is actually at the start. Click on the golden wings to get a slow fall and assign three members of your team to each direction. A fourth player is pre-stood at the entrance where the furthest orb is. They need to float down there before we actually start our attempt. The rest should be at the top. The fifth player can just be a backup for one of the directions. You automatically collect the first as you set off, then spread out to go to the other three. 40 seconds after the first is collected, the player stood at the furthest orb, runs in and collects theirs to reset the timer. And the players in the air should glide through theirs within 60 seconds. You might need a practice run to get a feel of where your orbs are, but they're pretty visible. That should be your final achievement if you did this video in order. I hope this guide helped you get all your achievements and lovely mount. I made this video so that all confusions I had along the way were addressed. I know a few guides had gaps in which made things harder for me. I wanted it to be as resourceful as possible so you could smoothly run through the achievements without any external help. This video was a hefty one and it took a while but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly had fun making it. If you did like it, be sure to leave a like. Feedback is always welcome. I read all your comments. I'll be making more guides and weekly news videos. If you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. It really helps me out. I stream over at 411 Games if you want to chat. Take care, everyone, and thank you so much. Bye.